Now let's just uh, briefly, and I know time is probably running short here, uh, go over to the Americas, uh, especially uh, North, Central, South America. So we're going to be running right along California here. I won't say too much about California, though. Um, but maybe 20 to 15,000 years ago, our ancestors came across the Bering Strait and then worked their way down the coast, probably with boat, uh, very quickly all the way to Chile. Uh, but the site that we're going to look at is Puerto Escondido in Honduras, which was excavated by uh, Cornell University in Berkeley. Um, and uh, it produced some very interesting evidence for a chocolate beverage. Um, what you have to think about, though, is if people are coming across from Asia, I mean, we've already looked at the Middle East at 700 BC. We've looked at China at 7,000 BC. Uh, now, you know, humans, after they came out of Africa, have, have somehow gotten over into North America, say, 15, 20,000 years ago. But they don't have rice. They don't have I mean, they have some grapes. I mean, because grapes, there's quite a few species, uh, especially in California, that maybe that you could try to exploit, or different kinds of high sugar fruits. But they don't have the same natural products that they've made fermented beverages from before. So they have to start experimenting with American natural products and see if they can make a fermented beverage. Corn is one very good example of that because they started out with this tiny cob and they eventually genetically change it into the very large corn cob that we're used to. Uh, they can make lots of beer. Uh, in fact, you know, breweries like Miller's and Budweiser still use corn quite a bit in making their beer, rice too. Um, so uh, what kinds of possible uh, fermentable products could they have focused in on? Well, one that uh, is, is interesting is cacao or chocolate. And here um, we see the fruit of the cacao. And this is the Criollo variety of, from Central America, very aromatic and has these very distinctive uh, ridges and indentations. Linnaeus, the Swedish botanist, uh, gave it the name Theobroma. And that means food of the gods. And this is uh, the beverage that's made from the chocolate, it turns out, is the elite beverage of the Americas. Uh, corn or uh, beer or chicha, you know, is at a lower level, but the chocolate beverage is intended for uh, royalty and the upper class. Now, the, uh, the beans that were so accustomed to being used uh, to make dark chocolate and so forth, there's maybe 30 or 40 of these inside the pod and these beans are surrounded by a pulp that has very high sugar, 15% sugar. And the way you release the beans is by a fermentation process. And in the process, you will produce a fermented beverage. And when the Spaniards first came to the Americas, they made observations on Indians in Guatemala, for example, taking uh, pods you know, like this and just dumping them into a dugout canoe and fermenting the whole mass and getting a fermented beverage of about seven, eight percent. And there are still places in the Americas where you can find that beverage being made. It, um, it really uh, it makes you then start to think, and, and this is where our research uh, has, has come, uh, that the reason humans got very interested in cacao or chocolate originally was to make the fermented beverage. And just like all our major grains, uh, rice, barley, wheat, sorghum, millet, corn, all of those can be made into fermented beverages. And it seems as if that was like a prime reason for why those grains got domesticated. Uh, same with fruits, uh, you know, domesticating the grapevine. You know, if you can get lots more grapes off of that domesticated vine, you can make a lot more wine and you, you, you can then, you know, sort of start to focus in on how to get a higher alcohol, because higher alcohol seems to be one of the, the real incentives that humans have. <laughs> you know, they're not satisfied with just the, I mean, beer is good under certain circumstances, right, but then you have other circumstances where you want to get higher alcohol, and so, you know, wine really fits that very well. Um, but I'm being too prejudiced when I say that. So uh, anyway, uh, 
so here we've got the cacao uh, plant that could have been domesticated because of this fermentable pulp that it has. And then we did analysis of vessels that look like this. And these are some of the earliest uh, pottery vessels uh, from Central America going back to 1400 BC. Uh, you know, a lot later than we have for the Near East or China, but still uh, before the Olmecs and some of the other more advanced cultures established themselves. And you'll notice that this vessel shape, again, has the high neck intended for a liquid, but it has the indentations and furrows uh, that you see on the pod. You know, so it's like, a, it's like a, an advertisement in pottery. This vessel contains a chocolate drink. And, uh, and we uh, then, you know, we're able to uh, look for the fingerprint compound for cacao, which is called theobromine. And we worked with a fellow at Hershey Chocolate, uh, you know, very appropriately, uh, Jeff Hurst. And uh, later in Aztec, uh, well, in Mayan times, Aztec times, 